Hey, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? Good, good, good. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in um, for, yeah, another Stories from House Arrest with one of my favourite people. Um, how have you been? How's um, life in the quarantine for you? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I'm one of those people who, uh, I mean, apart from the struggles of music um, and the things, the, the hard sides, I've actually really loved having a bit of catch up time mm. um because with what i was doing it was always so go 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 and now i've ha i mean i've had too much time don't get me wrong um there's been so many bad things about isolation mm. but things that i have been putting off i've now had the chance to get done so that, uh, that's been good yeah oh, that's good yeah it's been such a weird time have you been creative you? oh I've been yeah good. definitely <laughs> um i have <laughs> I haven't been like working uh, in the studios, um, but just writing from home and stuff. So, mm. yeah, it's it's been it's was really interesting for me, like on a creative standpoint. It took me like a really like a good two to three weeks to really get my creative mode on. Like at, at the start, it was just like I hit a rut, like I'd stopped with the world almost. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just took some adapting, and now I've sort of got back into the groove of things and. Yeah, things seem to be going okay on that front. I'm um, doing definitely a lot more recording now than I was um, when it all kicked off. Um, yeah, I think when the uncertainty sort of cleared a little bit and we all knew um, what we were doing, it was a bit easier for me. But um, yeah, like, with regards to like, writing over this period, have you written anything? Like, Has your songwriting been reflective of the times that we're in or what sort of stuff have you been writing? Um, I don't... No, I haven't really written anything um, about isolation, if that's what you mean. Mm. Um, but uh, same with me. Like, I struggled to write at the start because um, I was a bit like, oh, you know, like with music, it's a job as well, you know, mm. so you've got to find that time to pick up the guitar. Uh, and at the start, I had so much time and I was like, oh, I can finally have a break. And mm. um, But now I've picked it up a lot more, um, but it's mainly just been – going back over songs that I started that I just either didn't have the time to finish or hadn't picked up again. So, mm. sorry, there's a, there's a couple of cars going past. That's all good. I couldn't hear <laughs> them. Just it just, just adds to the mood, adds to the ambience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, it's, it's funny, like, with, with my songwriting over the period, like, I haven't really written, like, purely about my own experience in isolation. It's definitely crept into, like some of the themes that I've sort of explored. Like I wrote this song recently um, that's sort of about um, like conspiracy theorists and how they're going yeah. sort of, this is like their time to shine in a way. <laughs> uh, so it's a song about um, sort of being in that like minority conspiracy group and, and that state of mind. Um, and then there was another song I wrote, which was just sort of about being really pensive and indoors. So you know, directly, or sorry, indirectly about sort of the whole isolation stuff. But, um, yeah, just letting, uh, yeah, letting the whole, the mood sort of carry away and see how it all sort of flowed along and went. But, um, yeah. yeah, you never know how it's going to go. It's all weird, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. You're really good at that stuff, though, um, picking a story and telling it, uh, like, with a lot of your songs, so... Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, it's definitely, my strongest suit is definitely writing fictional stories. But yeah, it's weird. It, it definitely took, yeah, it took a few weeks to really get into writing at the moment. And then I think, um, I think there's plenty of good inspiration around if you can look for it, especially right now with everything, the way the world is. It's just um, how heavy do you want to go down that rabbit hole is the question, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I suppose let's kick things off with a song. Um, now, I don't know what songs you've chosen, so which is uh, the first song that you, you'd like to play today? Uh, I'm going to play a song called Sparks. I haven't put it out yet. Uh, I'm, both the songs I'm going to be playing today aren't online, so oh, okay. I'm sorry if anybody wants to jump on and check them out <laughs> afterwards. But they're coming. It's just like I was in the process of recording and then borders got shut and you can't get back to the studios. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, this song's called Sparks. Uh, I think I might just play it and then talk about it yeah, a bit after. Because I like, we, yeah, don't want to keep people waiting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds much. great. I'm keen to hear it. This is Sparks. Mm -hmm. 
She smells like cigarettes. She loves her herbal teas. Listens to all cassettes. Planted a willow tree in her mind. In her mind. mind. She says her life's a mess and tells me all her regrets. All of the lies she's told have been water to help them grow in her mind. In her mind. No climb as high up these walls as you build them, darling. You think you're broken, but you're only on your way. Oh, be your moon, your orbit has me overcome with every broken piece of you. Never felt so low. Here in a playful mess, she tells me about her dreams. She's on a steady path, changing everything in her mind. I co-wrote that one uh, with an artist called Ayla. Um, do you know Ayla? Uh, I don't know her personally, um, but I've heard her music. I think you showed me her music initially, actually. Yeah, she's such a lovely girl, um, and she really uh, just helped me with parts of that song that I was struggling, I guess, to express mm. um, the best bits that I like. Yeah, she helped me express the best bits that I wanted her to show, um, and mm. she's so talented what she does so was that song um was that like a really personal song or is it like just sort of like a story you've made up or uh yeah it's definitely a personal song um i wrote it about a good friend of mine um and just she's such an inspiring person and how inspired i felt meeting her and mm -hmm. that talent in my life um and you know you meet some people and they inspire inspire you so much and mm. they come to your life for a certain reason or a certain time um, and that's okay to have those moments and then grow and become who you need to become from those mm. times yeah so it's yeah really just about growing and the thankfulness I am that the lessons that that person taught me 
Oh, that's great. No, it's such a beautiful song. And because, like, with, with your writing, like, because uh, obviously I'm, I've been a fan since I first heard you play. Um, so I think I've heard, I think I've heard a fit, most of your stuff, um, except for obviously the new stuff, even some of the uh, unreleased stuff. So I'm like a big Leone fan. I know all your stuff. <laughs> but, um, like, so you, obviously you're a very personal writer. Um, yes. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's what I was saying to you before about how you can look at a flower and write a song about it. Um, whereas I either need to have felt that experience or have a friend um, tell me their mm. experience in order to write it. Like, um, yes, yeah, so I really love what you can bring to life. Mm. A good way, I just thought of a good way to put it. I, I look at the flower and write, and you are the flower and you write your experience. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, it's like for me, I like I I really struggle with personal stuff. So whenever I hear, it's something like you know, because for me, I I think the key attribute of any personal song should be uh, overwhelming honesty. I feel like it needs to feel really raw and really honest. Um, and if it doesn't, then I don't know. I feel like it's just not not quite on point. Whereas I've always felt with all your songs, it's always had that level of honesty to it, which. Which is easier said than done. It's much easier yeah. said than done. Don't get me wrong. Um, it is absolutely terrifying standing on a stage, um, giving yourself to a crowd of people that don't know you and telling such personal stories. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's, I guess, the people that come up to you after or say, hey, that really touched me or that meant a lot to me. Uh, that's what I love doing it for, so sharing yeah, those definitely. experiences and knowing that you're not yeah when when you play the like i mean being such a personal writer and when you're playing these songs do you what sort of emotions do you go through when you're playing like do you do you feel connected to the moment that the song's about or is it more you just you're just playing the song that you're used to or what do you do you have anything like that that you feel when you're playing them uh i always yeah, it always brings me back to either when I first wrote it um, or the emotions I was going through when I wrote those songs. Um, there are still a few songs um, that I find really hard to play live because um, it brings me back to some not-so-good memories, even though uh, the relief has come out of writing the song and mm. overcoming it. Um, it. Yeah, sometimes I still find it hard to... Sh and people don't even know sometimes what the songs are about. But yeah, pers it just yeah, some of them really hit a bit harder um, just from what they're about, which again is really hard when you write such personal stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's pretty daunting, <laughs> especially I think um, like because I while I don't really write personal stuff, a lot of them you know I I've written in you know good times and dark times and. Sometimes, like, mm. I definitely feel like, especially, like, when I was going through some, like, bad anxiety a few years ago. Um, actually, I remember when I was playing um, the, the final date for the uh, Songs from House Arrest EP when I was playing at um, Black Bear Lodge. And I remember, like, I was playing a song off, off the EP and I just felt, like, overwhelming anxiety because I was thinking about when I wrote it and it was such a... Uh, it was a song about basically going to the doctors a lot and... Um, yeah, it was really overwhelming, um, and especially because I don't really write too many personal songs. That one was sort of emotionally very personal, um, and yeah. it really took me by surprise. Um, but yeah, it can be interesting. I suppose it's important that if you're playing the songs <laughs> to watch your, make sure you're in the right state of mind to play them as well as anything yeah, exactly. else. I had that a bit last night with a live stream with one of my songs, um, and then I was like, oh, I thought I got away with it. And then someone requested it. And I was like, mm. no, but, oh, crap. you know, then it's also really good to see that they relate to the songs as well. So, yeah, nah, for sure. Well, for the first song I wanted to play. So when we first met, um, we were talking after the Listen Up Music final. Uh, yeah. Was it, what was it? The semifinals? Uh, either way, we were, we were talking after the show. Um, yeah. And we got talking and um, one of the songs that I didn't realise that you actually had heard my songs before, but you mentioned that um, you really like Queen of Versailles. Um, so I thought yeah. I'd play that one because I was sort of thinking about that before and I was thinking oh, I'd be a good one to play. Um, 
but even like just from like a songwriting perspective um it's really funny with this song um that what i've written it about and what everyone thinks it's about like i get it's probably one song that's gotten more polarizing perspectives than i've ever of any of my songs and it's really weird i mean what i wrote it about is uh, i mean it wasn't huge news but um it's just really interesting it's like one of those songs that people seem to all read differently so it's it's sort of cool i love that song yeah so yeah i thought i'd play that one to start things off yay You always come down Even just the guitar has the melody in itself. I just It's such a beautiful song. Oh, I, I, do, I do remember it was the, the Listen Up uh, semifinals in Brisbane. Oh, no, I, yeah, the semifinals in Brisbane. Um, yeah, and you were the judge. And I came up and you mentioned that you were in a band. And I knew the band. And I was like, I've got one of those songs in my playlist. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Yeah. It's so weird, like, it was funny, like, meeting you and uh, having to judge your songs. I, I still find it, like, you know, I love being involved with listening up music, but I find it so weird having to, like, critique other people's songs. Like, yeah. for me, it's just, like, how do you critique something so personal? I'm always just a bit hesitant, but um, I think, um, yeah, it's interesting. I think that sort of brings up the whole, like, you know, what is good songwriting, you know? And, yeah, I, for me, I think it's a, such an open question, like, 
it, it depends on who's listening, really, doesn't it? Like, there's no such thing as the unanimous... I mean, there are songs that are just unanimously good, but there's always going to people be people who don't like them and vice versa, so... Of yeah, course. All subjective. That's what, uh, sorry, that's what I love about Listen Up Music uh, and the competition itself is it's not about the artists mm. or necessarily the song structure. It's just about the emotion and the meaning um, mm. And for anybody who's watching, I think Listen Up is open at the moment and they're still going to try and do the the competition this year. And if you've, you've got any meaningful songs um, and you want to enter, you should definitely do it because mm, the yeah. community within Listen Up is, yeah, it's just such a great community. Even Jordan, mm. like we met the first night, we've continued speaking since and same with the other judges. It's not, like some competitions can seem really overwhelming and mm. um even disheartening when yeah. you don't get through but every time i've been to a listen up event um anybody who hasn't gone through to the next round still leaves feeling so on such a high and so mm. loved and filled with emotion it's just such yeah. a great event so definitely yeah. consider it it really it's it's amazing and it's probably the only like i remember playing a battle of the bands once and it was the worst experience i've ever had <laughs> It was just so bad. I won't even go into it. Um, but, I'm uh, not into music competitions, but yeah. I remember a friend the link, and I was like, "Oh, not really like a competition person." And then I, I read what it stood for, and I was like, "Yeah, this this might be a good thing for me." And yeah, it was. It's yeah. just been the best. It's it's an amazing community, and that's what I loved about it. Like as you said, it's not really a it's a songwriting competition, but the competition is is more just. Um, like you know people sharing their stories and let's celebrate their stories only a few people can get through but um in the end of the day like as you said like everybody walks away feeling feeling happy um in some way like i know for me like i think when i'm the very first time we did the listen up thing um when i was the doing the judging um like i'd come from having a really hard time the, the previous few months and i was just um i was shocked and taken back by how how open it was uh it yeah. was like everyone's walking in saying hey i'm a human we've all got emotional baggage but let's let's support each other and, and celebrate getting on through to the other side and it's like wow what a weird concept um but that's what i love about it and that's why i love being involved that's for sure i know it can uh like i won the listen up music competition a few years ago and i know it can look uh i don't know if hypocritical is the right word to say but um biased it can look biased of me giving this opinion because yeah i won and i went through um but there are so many of the people who didn't win who still stand the exact same opinion um and it yeah like it wasn't some competitions what once you win you don't really hear much from other people yeah. everybody is still tight family and you still stay in touch with those people you were with at the, the semi-finals to the finals and, mm. and yeah it's it's just such a great, great organization. Yeah, definitely. Like I've, I've just, I've connected with so many musicians through it and, um, and it's just been great, especially like, cause you get it, like, there was a lot of, at least in the last year's competition, there was a lot of younger artists. Like, you know, I think there was a few under 18, a few just past 18 and just hearing the songs and the, and the stories that they yeah. were coming out with. I remember when we were judging the Brisbane one last year, I think that we had to let an extra person through because it was just we'd never seen such quality talent and quality songwriting and it was just it was ridiculous we were all just like how do we choose three and then ali gave us permission to do the add an extra person which was which was very good of him but um i think that passion that they have behind mm. their songs pushes it to that extra yeah. level as well. it's not just about hey we're like we've written this song what do you think Mm. it's all that emotion shines so much and like coming back to someone like me who writes such personal music um yeah it's just the best platform to be on yeah when you played night terrors every single person it was just like what mm. <laughs> i i've never seen like such a hushed crowd it was just it was it was hectic mm. but um i suppose looking at new songs so what's this um next song that you've got planned um, yeah, so it's a bit different to my normal type of songwriting I I have put out or I have in my sets. Um, it's a bit more of a, and not necessarily upbeat makes it different to my normal songs, but it's got more of a, a grungier, poppier feel to it. Mm. Um, 
And I guess without tiptoeing around the subject too much, I wrote this song, uh, I guess, a bit about an ex-relationship. Um, and just how much I've grown um, and, like, it's easy for people to um, to put you down or to do certain things. Like, everybody has ups and downs in relationships. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's just standing my ground and thinking, no, I'm not going to let those things get to me. Um, in my mind, keeping that positivity of I think I'm good enough, I am good enough. Um, everybody's values of what is success or what is good enough always sit on such different levels yeah. so you need to remember like just because somebody's view of success doesn't hit yours doesn't mean you're unsuccessful um but yeah so yeah it's just a bit more of a this is me and <laughs> yeah the song's called better than Thank you. Yeah, that's such yeah. a nice song. And uh, as someone who's heard a sneak preview of it, I think it's 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 great. Um, I think it's really hard sometimes as a musician to explore genres and to push your sound. Um, and I think as well, like from like a like a music business perspective, um, sometimes it can be seen as app. You know, you should be more apprehensive towards explaining your sound. Because, oh, if people like, you know, your folk song, well, don't go too far out of the deep end, you know? Um, but I think, like, me personally, I feel like that goes against everything I believe in as a, as a songwriter. Um, and it's really cool hearing, like, because I remember when you showed me that song first, um, like, when you were just starting to demo it, 
Um, and it was, yeah, it's really cool to hear you, I suppose, push your sound in a different direction. Um, not because yeah. like, oh, you have to, but because, um, because why not, you know, if it works, if it's, if it's feeling right, then why not do it? Yeah, I think it, it shows the different levels of emotions that have come through mm. with uh, certain situations. Um, and I, yeah, this song was supposed to be out in the world by now, but obviously because of COVID and the borders, I'm mm. currently uh, isolating in New South Wales because I was down this way, the borders got shut. So I've been here uh, since it started. Mm. Um, and so the recording studio was in Brisbane, so I haven't been able to get back and finish up the, the following ties so hopefully after the borders open and things are looking a bit more um well in the world mm. then yeah i'll be able to get it out and have it for the people because yeah it's another thing that's so daunting is not giving music to the people who mm. are supporting i've had i have such an amazing um support network of just people and i just feel so guilty not being able to give back to them mm. um as as much as it's nice to have this time for me to then work and write more for them i still feel really guilty just not yeah having those products out for those people so yeah it can be really tricky um and um especially you know when you're um you know when you, your income's reliant on putting stuff out as well um there's so many factors yeah. um and like you go through the creative factors and the, as you said, you just want to do right by the people supporting you. You want to give them something to listen Then like your fans, you want to give them something to listen to. There's so many factors, um, but then you, money, you know, pops up and um, yeah. that's hard at the best of times for musicians, let alone um, right now. One thing though that I of think... Of course, it's a big cycle. Mm. Sorry. Oh, sorry, you go. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, it's a big cycle of, uh, especially for someone or myself, when I do music for a living, mm. um, that music that I get then recycles back into putting it out. And to yeah. be on such a um, a hold at the moment of mm. having that recycle, it then makes it harder to, say, go purchase recording uh, equipment for home to get out to the people. Mm. So, mm. yeah, it's just a bit of a cycle. But. Yeah, definitely. I reckon it'll be really interesting when um, the borders open up because, I, I mean, my gut feel says international travel is going to be really restricted for ages. Um, yeah. For at least, you know, you'd think like another year before it's fully back to normal. And yeah, of course. if that's the case, then you have to think as our borders open up and we can do concerts again, that you'd hope that there's going to be a big push in Australian music again. Um, not, I suppose it's going to be interesting because it's forced in a way. But um, I think, you know, and I was even just looking at Brisbane last year when um, I was listening to it. Do you know Emerge, the radio station in Brisbane? Yeah. Yeah, um, I was listening to their, I think it was their top 20 or top 30 thing that they did last year. And, man, just hearing the good music coming out of Brisbane alone, I was like, geez, okay. how is more of this not out there? Um, and I think if there's anything positive that can come from Corona for musicians, hopefully it's that. Um, Australian artists really get given a good chance to shine. Um, you know, I get international artists, you know, popularity is a thing, but I think right now when you don't have artists to book, you've got to book your yeah. local talent. And I think it's going to be a really good opportunity, fingers crossed anyways. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, speaking of... It's, oh, yeah, sorry. So just to add to that, it's, it's also just really amazing that we live in a world where we have access to what we're doing right now, like oh, live yeah. streaming. So imagine um, the circumstances if technology wasn't this advanced mm. and this crisis had happened. Like, it's we're so grateful. So Yeah, go I mean, back so to 100 years ago when the Spanish flu hit <laughs> and everyone yeah. was like, God, we can't leave our street. <laughs> I wonder what's, I think what's going on in the other suburb. <laughs> Yeah, I know that um, technology has changed the music industry drastically from from many years ago, um, but I think this is really going to be a bigger push as well, and it's going to be interesting to see where, even in the next year, how um, music changes because of all this. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully for the better. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, it's always organic. I think music's always changing. Um, I mean, there's consistencies, you know, 
with what's in and what's out. Like it does change a bit, but I think um, I think it's I think this period's probably going to teach a lot of people um, you know a lot about themselves, and I think that's just going to reflect in songwriting. I know I've learned a lot about myself um, through this period, but I think it's important to always continue learning and to always look at yourself in the mirror and you know. Yeah. You know, not just look at flaws, look at what you're doing well, look at what you need to improve, and always just having that developmental mindset. It sort of reaffirmed yeah. that for me during this period because it was, yeah, tricky at the start, but yeah, you get through it, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I wanted to play, um, you know, it's funny mentioning releasing songs during COVID. Um, I put out, um, I'm going to play Millennial Blues, the song I put out yeah. in March. Um, it was like the worst timing ever, really. Um, it's so, such a good song. Ah, oh, thanks. Um, so the song came out on um, March 20. Can you hear Luna barking? Oh my God, she's yeah. in that case. <laughs> Luna's sad that she's not in the live stream. She hasn't been in one in a while. Sorry, Luna. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was like literally the week, because my birthday was on March 18. So it was like coming out birthday week. I had uh, the Listen Up music show, then a really awesome um, show that was close to selling out. Um, uh, in Brisbane so it was like this really awesome lead up into the song coming out that week I think Listen Up was cancelled um, the day before my birthday they were like oh by the way you can't come into work anymore everyone's working you're going to be working from home and I was like okay yeah. and then by the day the song was out I think that was the day that like I think it was like Junk Bar had to cancel the show or it was basically going to be cancelled at that stage yeah. Um, the AFL season had stopped. So I was just like, everything I like <laughs> is stopped. So it was like a really awkward, awkwardly timed single. But um, it's funny, like, you know, releasing it and getting a lot of feedback from people um, about how relevant it feels for them. Um, oh, and which is weird because, you know, it was written about really, you know, especially looking at times now, it's, it's more like, you know, some of it's somewhat satirical first world problem poking and others are a bit more serious but then this sort of is like a big perspective song now especially the the world's greatest fight you know it was just like geez okay it was good timing <laughs> no it's a very very relatable song um i guess specifically for millennials <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, i don't know if you haven't heard this song yet and you're sticking around for the live stream you'll understand exactly what we're talking about but um <laughs> Yeah, it's such a relatable song, and every time I listen to it, it, I get the same hit of feelings as the first time I heard it, so. Oh, I'm glad. (laughs) Well, yeah, here it goes. Sitting in a chat room, hoping to see you. My high school sweetheart must be so nice to be you. You nudged my heart and blocked out the rest. These millennial blues, they ain't over yet. My space was your space, and your space was mine. I shared with you my thoughts maybe too many times. And all that is left is my fifth glass of wine And the Lenny Blues taking over my mind This book, that book, full of blank faces I looked for you there, but only found spaces For the people I'd known I'd turned stranger fire with my Lenny my friend for life And I tried to see if there's more to this life Than struggling to be in the world's greatest fight The millennial blues Take what they like Avocado on sourdough bread, credit cards cancelled, I can't pay the rent, and all that is left is the debt on 
my head and the millennial blues taking what they can get. I tried to study to make me some money, but before I could study, they wanted my money. I ought to be a cog in the machine, I guess millennial blues are worse than they seem. And I tried to see if there's more to this life than struggling to be in the world's greatest fight. The millennial blues take what they like. And I'm old and weary, so much has passed. Try to look forward, but I keep looking back. I'm nothing but a friend someplace online whose millennial blues turned into a rhyme. <laughs> yeah, it's. Funny, it's weird how like a song like, cause that song literally stemmed from like, overpriced avocado in Collingwood when I was in Melbourne. <laughs> it's like you know the weird <laughs> things that inspire you, right? Yeah, and if it, um, if you guys are listening and you you couldn't quite hear or the connection was a bit funny in any way, definitely jump online to Spotify or YouTube or whatever you prefer and check that song out because it's such a great song, um, especially if you can relate. <laughs> so. Ah, thanks. So basically, if you're 40 or under, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No offense to everybody who's over 40. I'm just making a joke, you know. No need to get offended. <laughs> but yeah, no, hey, look, um, yeah, once again, I just want to say a really big thank you for, for coming on tonight. Um, yeah, you're the, the fourth guest. Um, and it's, yeah, it's been a really fun four weeks um, of, of talking to people about their songwriting and I was really looking forward to, to having you on because I really am a big fan of, of what you do. And I think um, yeah, I, like I, I just love the way you're able to portray, you know, honesty in your songs and, and just provoke emotion with, with truth and your own experience. It's hard to do. So I really, I was really wrapped that you, you were keen to jump on. Um, and it's been very, very nice hearing, hearing your music and no, hearing your story. So yeah you too um i know i like we've both heard each other's music um over and over again but i still always feel exactly the same every time i listen to your songs i always get goosebumps i just think um whether you think that you're not a personal writer or not um they still touch in such a personal way and i think that um you're being a bit hard on yourself <laughs> saying that you don't write as personally as you think you do because I definitely think you do. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, they're all the. I, I, I think the songs are very personal to me on an, like an emotional level. Um, but I think like with my songs, it's more open. They're more of an open-ended sort of thing, um, as opposed. I think if I try to tell stuff too honestly, that I, I feel like it would just it would turn out really, it, it wouldn't seem sincere because it's yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I hide behind stories. It's easier. <laughs> but yeah, no, I really appreciate you saying that. And I, I mean, that's, hey, as, as like songwriters, if you can touch other people in one way, shape or form, then yeah, you're doing your job. So I appreciate um, you sharing that. <laughs> if we have any time left on the stream, um, would you mind sharing a bit about how you go about your writing process? Yeah, definitely. Um, so with, um, I mean, with how I go about my writing process, I mean, in terms of going to sit down to finish songs, usually um, I treat it like um, I sort of have to go into work mode, um, which is something like, um, yeah, I sort of learned a few years ago. But um, I just try to go into my, my office space or, you know, here I've got, I'm lucky enough to have a little studio and I just try to, um, I suppose, compartmentalise the idea that I had and put it into a song. So I always try to write the lyrics and music together. Um, and often I'll write, you know, lyrics um, you know, into my phone or write them down um, and then sort of build the music from from that. Um, but yeah, for me, it's all about the idea and 
I mean, there's there's a saying that um, I sort of always refer back to when it comes to tying the idea in, and that's um, it's an F. Scott Fitzgerald quote that's um, find your key emotion. That's all you need to write your story. And yeah. um, that, like, when I was having writer's block years ago, and I found that quote, I was like, well, that's that makes it a lot easier. All you have to do is sort of work out the emotion you're trying to tell. And for me, I would just work out what I'm feeling and try to you know, bring it into the story. And there's, you know, make the music, the soundtrack to the story, and then the lyrics hopefully will, will follow. I mean, a lot of the times it doesn't work, and you, you know, I'll write something pretty average. Um, other times, you know, you, you sort of get lucky, you know, you catch a good fish and um, yeah. ends up being something you can be proud of. Um, but yeah, I just, I try to be really systematic in that, in that approach. Um, but, you know, with that being said, sometimes songs will hit you at the worst possible time. Like you're going to bed and you're like, God, I can't really get out of bed. Um, other times I've literally gone you know, going to get a train or a bus and a melody hit me and I have to get my phone and sing it quickly. And, yeah. you know, I look like a bit of a, a creeper. So I was like singing into my phone. Um, but, you know, you've just got to take it when, when it comes, you know, it's like, it can be really fleeting. Um, and I don't really, I remember I was listening to some, another musician talk about how, how they, they, they heard when they were young and they've always stuck with you because I don't remember the melody, then it wasn't a good enough melody to begin with. And I, I've never really... I can sort of get where they're coming from, but I think sometimes as well, like it can be so fleeting that you haven't had a chance to really process it. And um, yeah. that's why I always think it's important whenever you, if you have your instrument with you, you know, if something comes to your head, just record it. Cause even if you don't use the first four, the fifth one might be the best song you've ever written. And you yeah. don't want to take a chance and not remember it. Um, just yeah. because, oh, it has to be good enough to remember. So I'm, I'm a big fan of just trying to, you know, mark everything down and, um, keep track of everything that comes into your head. And I think it's a good process because it means that if something does come to you and you're just drilling yourself to make sure you, you write it down, um, then, you know, it's, it generally works to your advantage. But yeah. um, I also think as well, sometimes you've got to know when to take a break. Cause sometimes I'll get to the point where I've been doing a lot of writing and I'll, my writing will start to get really stale um, and I'll know it's time to, to take a break and... Um, yeah, and really just park it for a bit and then go just, you know, have a, like a, a mental holiday, you know. For me, like I'll go and, you know, I might play some video games or play with Luna or do something, just anything just that's not music. And I find yeah. that definitely helps as well. Yeah. How about you, like with your writing, like how do, how do you approach your writing? Um... I don't really have a structure in the way I write. Um, I'm very much, as what you were saying, it, it always comes at the most awkward times. Mm. Like I have I struggle to write something and come back to it. Um, I either have to finish a song once I've started in like 10 minutes or I, yeah, I just can't go back to it. Um, so, yeah, because I just feel like once that emotion hits and you start writing, afterwards if you go back to it, it's faked emotion. Mm. Um, and, or not faked, but it's not the same way that you felt when you wrote that song. And so I lose my touch with the connection of that song. Mm. Um, so yeah, I don't really have any great advice on how to write songs. Um, like I, I've got a song that I literally wrote in the shower because the melody came and like you, I jumped out and wrote it down and or finished it mm. in like five minutes. Um, well, probably not five minutes, but you know what I mean? 20 and a half an hour. Um, but yeah, it's just oh, it's always interesting hearing how other people write and getting those ideas in. Mm. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I think in the end of the day, there's no right or wrong way, and yeah, quite I often agree. the right way is the wrong way half the time, anyway. So. Uh, but like you were saying about sitting with things, like I think I sent you a song um, a couple of weeks ago because um, I. I wrote the so a bit of a song and I wasn't really feeling it and I played it to my sister and she mm. liked it. And you never know, like, just because you don't like it, mm. um, it, you know, doesn't mean that other people are going to like it. But I, I still wasn't really feeling it. But then the next morning I woke up, uh, mm. first thing in bed, I um, I remembered I wrote it, so I press press play on the record to, um, to re-listen to it back. And it, it hit me in a different way than it did that night. Mm. And I sort of... Um, heard what I didn't like about it and I understood it a bit more which sort of contradicts um my saying about I write a song in five minutes um 
but that's the first time that I've actually taken that time to listen to it in a different way. So, mm. well, that's great, and I think it's important. I think that what that shows is it shows that yeah, you're flexible and versatile with um with how you um approach your songs, and I think it's important to be flexible. Like I, when I said before that you know I try to go to my desk and switch into work mode. Sometimes just that's that's not the way, you know. Sometimes you've got to embrace whatever way is possible at the time. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's it's really it's one of those things that it's you know songwriting is an art form, but the way you write is different. So often, um, and it can be different for everybody. Whereas painting, you've always got the canvas and you're painting, right? Whereas songwriting yeah. is just completely. It's just can be so random and. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a weird world <laughs> that, um, I think that's sort of, you know, what I love about it. And, um, you know, I, I always, you know, and I've, I felt like this ever since I really started taking songwriting seriously is that you never know when you, you've written your last good song. And, um, yeah. and it's, it's such, it's the thought of that fear of loss that drives me sometimes. Like, you know, if I haven't written a song in a week, I'm starting to worry. And I'm like, well, if I haven't written a song this week, then what's going on? Do I have, can I keep writing? Um, yeah. And I always, I always try to push myself like that because I, I know that if I ever settle and say, oh, yeah, I've written 200 songs, that's plenty. I, I've got enough material to last me another year or two uh, or three. But um, in the end, like, that's just, for me, that's like the attitude I just can't afford to have because I feel like if I ever have that attitude, that's when I'm just going to drop off the face of the earth with writing and, I'll suck, so, or I'll just stop. So yeah, it's um, yeah, all part of the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, it's funny. I think when it comes to songwriting musicians, I feel like it's something that we could talk about for hours. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got such a different view on it. So. Yeah, exactly, and that's I tell you what, that's one thing that's been really great about doing these um stories from house arrest things is just hearing everybody's different approach. Like you know. I think, yeah, I've had yourself, um, Frank Sultana, who has had a lot of inspiration from being a travelling musician, and then um, Nicole McKinney, who um, is sort of similar to you in... She's like a you and me hybrid, and that she writes personal songs really well, but um, I also really love her ability to, to write um, more of a metaphor style of yeah. song as well. Like, man, she is really talented. Um, and then um, Brendan James of Bard of Brunswick... Um, who, man, he's a type of writer who just has his heart on his sleeve, but just when you watch him perform, for me, his music is best served live. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just, it just amazes me how much, how different everybody is, yet there's still similarities, but, you know, it can be the smallest things that are similar and the wildest things that are different. And it's, um, it's yeah, it's what I've really loved about this, and um, I'm glad I've got a few more artists coming up because I'm enjoying it too much. <laughs> Yeah. But um, yeah. Look, and thanks again for coming on. Um, I can't wait for the borders to open, and um, <laughs> you know, you guys can come to Brizzy and stay with us whenever you want. Luna <laughs> misses you, so um, definitely come, and um, and we can jam, do some recording or something. Yeah, you guys heard it. Once the borders open, Jordan said he'll let me record, so there's no excuse not yeah. to release new music. <laughs> if it's on live Facebook, you know I can't back out. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, no, thanks yeah thanks again for coming on leone and um yeah look, i can't wait for your next single whenever that is uh, i'll be keeping an eye me out that's for sure <laughs> me too yeah, um so. yeah thank you so much no have a great worries. evening you too and thanks everybody for coming on i hope you have a great night and um yeah we'll see you next week bye